Good evening. Um, my name is Felicia Henderson. I am currently a PhD student or PhD candidate in the Cinema Media Studies Department. And I come to you tonight to share um, some of the thoughts from some of Tashomi's um, former students and to add my thoughts to those. Um, I emailed a, a group of people and chose some of them to share with you because uh, as you will hear over and over tonight from um, anyone, no matter what position in his life, uh, you found that you were one of his students. The first one is, says, Tashomi made me feel like a daughter, but treated me like a scholar, always. He listened to me rail against the system, the strangeness, the salts of my ability, and gently guided, encouraged, and forced me through the sometimes hazy process of graduate education. He championed my work and challenged me to open my, myself up to possibilities. He did this through the way he taught, but more through what he did, his example. While so many tout themselves as public intellectuals, to show me embodied a lived intellectualism, a world of connections and ideas, spirit and laughter, engaging the world, but allowing, allowing its turns to ramble through my mind. That is from Beretta E. Smith Shamadi, Associate Professor and Chair, Department of Communications, Tulane University, and a former Toshomi student from right here at UCLA. The next one says, my, fam my favorite memory of Toshomi stems from the work I did for him as a TA over 15 years ago. I think we had something like 200 students in the class. I had two sections of 20 or so students each, and I was one of four or five of T TAs for the class. After I finished evaluating the first round of papers, Toshomi asked me to meet with him to discuss my grades. I went to his office at the time we'd agreed to meet, and alas, he was not there. I found him by the Coke machine, sitting on the bench, smoking a cigarette and drinking a cup of coffee. Toshomi, how may I help you? I decided to take the passive aggressive route. <laughs> Toshomi was always the bigger person though, always living and teaching atop the moral high ground. He didn't take the bait. We have some terrific students, don't you think? He said something like that. As I recall, we proceeded to discuss several papers in great detail. I could tell he wasn't sure I was being fair enough, though he never said that to me. I soon realized that Toshomi actually read all of my students' papers. He knew too many details. He could actually quote lines from different papers. And I heard from other TAs that he also met with them about, about their grading. I walked away from that experience humbled. Toshomi cared about his students, their ideas, and intellectual growth. And he wanted his TAs to take the same time and care grading their 40 papers that he took reading 200 papers. Indeed, Toshomi treated us, all of his students, as intellectuals. He held all to a high standard, but he didn't let that standard get in the way of treating us like individuals. Daniel Bernardi, Associate Professor, School of Transporter Studies, Film and Media Studies program, Arizona State University, and former Toshomi student. The last one I'd like to share says, Toshomi, Toshomi taught me who I wanted to be as a scholar, a teacher, and a person. He valued our ideas, our input, our interpretations. He nurtured our voices even when he challenged us to clearly enunciate our ideas and our positions. He empowered us every day so that we could do the same for another generation of students. Another generation of students. Bambi Hagens, Associate Professor, Film and Media Studies, Arizona State University, and former Toshomi student. And now I'd like to um, add my own experience to those that I've shared. Um, I, I first learned of Toshomi's passing in an email from Chan Noriega. And my heart was immediately overwhelmed with grief. A couple of days later, um, I ran into Richard Walter at Toshome's office where I was posting his obituary and taping a photo of him to his door. And Richard said that he'd heard the, when he heard the news, he immediately ran to Toshome's office door and started to pound on it and demand that he open it up. He demanded him to answer the door. And he said, I know that sounds crazy. And I said, it sounds real, because I understood that. 
I understood it then and I understand it today because I still feel like I want to keep pounding on that door until he opens it. Because I wasn't finished learning from him. And what I learned from Tashomi had as much to do with life as it had to do with scholarship. Um, sometimes the, the, the lessons were brief, but that was rare. Um, I once asked him, I said, I'm a television writer. How am I ever going to think like a scholar? And he said, you don't have to ever think like a scholar. You have to encourage scholars to think like you. In other words, he didn't say you have to come and, and figure out how to be a part of this, but you have to be comfortable with who you are and, and make people comfortable with who you are as well. And like I said, all lessons weren't that brief. Sometimes you didn't know that he was finished with the lesson until he would say, you know, stuff like that in that kind of business. <laughs> that was usually how you knew he was done. So on one such day, as we sat outside Laval, I asked him a very specific question about African cinema. And he said, go to the library with me. So we took a, a walk to the library. As we started, he started to answer my question. And we got there, and he started taking things off the shelves, still answering my question. We finally got in line after he had this mound of books and periodicals, and he checked them all out. He was still answering my question the whole time. And finally, we checked out, but he checked out all the stuff and we went outside and he finished his, his answer. And I knew that 20 minutes later, he was finally finished because he said, you know, and stuff like that in that kind of business. <laughs> and then he took that big mound of stuff that he had and he said, okay, now you know what I think about this, about the question. I look forward to hearing what you think about it next week. So I took my mound of books and sat down <laughs> And he said, oh, and by the way, please turn those in, in time, on time. They're all checked out in my name. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say that I guess that's one of the things that um, I miss most, because he just treated you, as you hear over and over, um, like family while teaching you to be a scholar. Um, in my second year of the PhD program, while I was taking uh, the comprehensive exams, I, uh, my mother was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And by the time I finished the year, she had passed away. And I went to Toshome. And I told him, I don't think I can go on. I don't really think I can continue the program. Um, I just don't think I have it in me. And he said, okay, well, just do me a favor if you don't have it in you. Then finish it in your mother's honor. And then when you finish your dissertation, dedicate it to her. And so I said, you know, I'd always planned if I ever finished to dedicate it to you. And he said, I don't know why you do a thing like that. I had nothing to do with it. And so hopefully in about a year, I will finally finish and I will listen to Toshome and dedicate it to the memory of my mother, but I will also listen to my heart and dedicate it to Toshome Gabriel. Thank you very much.